Welcome to the Freeland Writer's Eye Spotlight Talks for YouTube. Before we begin, I encourage you to use these videos interactively. When you are prompted to observe, pause the video and look carefully. When the educator asks a question, feel free to pause the video again and discuss your observations and ideas, making sure to address what you see that makes you say that. We're excited to share these videos with you and read your Writer's Eye entries. Enjoy! Let's take a long, slow look at this oil painting by American artist Alice Baber. If you would like, start at the top of the image and slowly let your eye move downward, scanning the image from left to right and right to left. When you reach the bottom, let your eye move upward taking in any details you may have missed the first time. Now let's look with intention at the different colors. Let your eye notice the areas of blue. Let your eye notice areas of green. Areas of yellow and areas of orange. What do you notice about the use of color in this painting? What ideas do you have about the shapes or the forms in this painting? Does it remind you of anything you've seen before? At first glance, this painting may look like a mass of shapes and colors overlapping each other. The shapes vary in opacity, almost as if the light is hitting them from different directions. The center of the painting is filled with lighter yellows and green, oval shapes compacted together to form a larger shape. Red and orange shapes emerge from the bottom. After observing the painting for a few minutes, I'm curious, what questions do you have about this work of art? I'd like to know more about Alice Baber and her process. In researching this painting, I learned Alice Baber was born in Illinois in 1928. As a child, she was often sick and regularly traveled back and forth from her home in Illinois to Florida because the doctors thought she would benefit from fresh air and sunlight. Even though she grew up during the Great Depression, she dreamed of becoming an artist. Her passion for art started in school when she began learning the alphabet. Baber reflected on her love for forms and shapes, saying, I don't remember when I couldn't read. I do remember learning the alphabet because I loved the shape of the letters. And most of it had to do with a kind of formal quality. I liked the letters when a through M went straight down, and then N through Z, that sort of thing. Baber's intention from the very beginning of her career was to create art in a way that did not remind her of the work of a thousand other people. Baber also said that when she painted, she only created 80 to 90% of it, and she left freedom for the viewer to create their own meaning. I'd like to share a little bit more about her process. Alice Baber described her paintings as an exploration of the infinite range of possibilities, focused on composition, transparency, color, and line. She depicted different emotions through the use of intense colors. What emotions or feelings would you assign to the colors in this painting, Hunt in the Mountain, number one? One of her most important techniques was the application of turpentine to lift areas of color, changing the opacity of the shapes. Baber didn't like to use lines to indicate structure, opting instead for forms, ovoid form, forms, to express different passageways throughout the painting. She was more interested in shape and color than realistic portrayals, leaning into the painting style of abstract expressionism. 
Alice Weber said this about abstraction. I feel that an abstract painting is outer space, and I am in front of it, suspended in outer space, so that there isn't any horizon line. However, there is probably a sense of up and down and side to side. There is a sense of infinity, which I like very much. And I like the idea of infinity coming way forward so that you have reverse infinity. Baber also said that some of her paintings contain an atmospheric wind moving the other colors and shapes around. What do you think? What forces might create movement in this painting? We're all looking forward to the day when we can gather safely at the museum. Until then, please reach out to the Education Department with any questions or feedback. Our email is museumoutreach at virginia.edu.